Hello, this is Joe McGee. Welcome to our podcast. Make sure that you subscribe and please share the podcast with your friends. That is the number one way you can help us reach people with God's love and healing. We love you guys. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Hey, it's Joe McGee. We're going through the Bible, book by book, from Genesis to Revelation. We're in the book of Numbers today. <laughs> it's sort of a long book, but it's very, very important. And so God's laying out the details under the law, what they had to do to stay in touch with them, stay in fellowship with them. So it's a real good story. So we're in Numbers chapter 6 today, and I tell people I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Uh, I still study the King James but I don't speak King James. So I'm uh, reading from the New Living Translation. It's my favorite translation. So there's many, but this is my favorite. So we're in Numbers chapter six, starting in verse one. So then the Lord said to Moses, give the following instructions to the people of Israel. If any of the people, either men or women, take the special vow of a Nazarite, setting themselves apart to the Lord in a special way, they must give up wine and other alcoholic drinks. They must not use vinegar made from wine or from other alcoholic drinks. They must not drink any fresh grape juice. (laughs) They must not eat grapes or raisins. This is real legalistic. As long as they're bound by the Nazarite vow, they're not allowed to eat or drink anything that comes from a grapevine, not even the grape seed or the grape skins. Verse 5. They must never cut their hair throughout the time of their vow, for they are holy and set apart to the Lord. Until the time their vow has been fulfilled, they must let their hair grow long. They must not go near a dead body during the entire period of the vow to the Lord. Even if the dead person is their own father, mother, brother, sister, they must not defile themselves, for the hair on their head is a symbol of their separation to God. This requirement applies as long as they are set apart to the Lord. Now, people used to ask me, because I taught this to high school kids, uh, oh, 40 years ago, I was a school administrator. We went from Genesis to Revelation uh, 10 times in 10 years. Every year I'd start. So I've got 171 days, 171 school days every year. And so I would do this because I realized most kids had never read their Bible. Uh, they never read much of the old Testament or a lot of the new Testament. So I wanted to take them through at least one time, at least one time in your life, you should have read the Bible because there's a lot of good information. So you got the old covenant. Then we have a better covenant, a new covenant. We didn't do away with the old covenant. We just fulfilled it. And so just little tidbits as you go through. Anyhow, we're going to pick up in verse nine. If someone uh, falls dead beside them, The hair they have dedicated will be defiled. They must wait seven days and then shave their heads. Then they will all be cleansed from their defilement. On the eighth day, they must bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons to the priest at the entrance of the tabernacle. The priest will offer one of the birds for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering. In this way, he will purify them from their guilt they incurred through their contact with a dead body. Then they must reaffirm their commitment and let their hair begin to grow again. The days of their vow were completed before the defilement no longer count. They must rededicate themselves to the Lord as a Nazarite for the full term of their vow. And each must bring a one-year-old male lamb as a guilt offering. This is very, very legalistic. God just didn't tolerate any yes, no, maybe, halfway. This is very, God's trying to let them know God's holy. He does not tolerate sin. Now, the new covenant, we've, we've been redeemed from the curse of the law, which is poverty, sickness, and death. It is a whole new set of thrills now. So, But you've got to get this in you to understand how we've been blessed. So verse 18, this is the ritual law for the Nazarites. At the conclusion of their time of separation as Nazarites, they must each go to the entrance of the tabernacle and offer their sacrifices for the Lord. A one-year-old male lamb without defect, for a burnt offering, a one-year-old female lamb without defect for a sin offering, the ram without a defect for a peace offering, a basket of bread made without yeast, cakes of choice flour mixed with olive oil and wafer spread on olive oil, along with the prescribed grain offerings and liquid offerings. The priest will present these offerings before the Lord for the sin offering and for the burnt offering, then the ram for the peace offering, along with a basket of bread made without yeast, 
and the priest must also present the prescribed grain offering and liquid offering to the Lord. It is so immensely detailed. I had high school kids, they would just shake their head and wonder my life. You see, guys, you've never read this, have you? You didn't know what people had to go through to get to God. Because when Adam sinned, Satan became the legal God of this planet. He took over. God was in charge until man sinned. Sin's got death attached to it. Death separates us from God. And so God made a way by sending a son for faith in what Jesus did to get back to him. Ooh, this is really good. Verse 18. Then the Nazarites will shave their heads at the entrance of the tabernacle. They will take the hair that has been dedicated and place it on the fire beneath the peace offering sacrifice. After the Nazarite head has been shaved, the priest will take for each of the uh, the men uh, a ball shoulder of the ram and take as a basket of cake and wafer made without yeast. He will put them into the Nazarite's hand. Then the priest will lift up a special offering before the Lord. These are holy portions for the priest, along with the bread of special offering and the thigh of the sacred offering that are lifted up before the Lord. After this ceremony, the Nazarites may begin to drink wine. This is the ritual law of the Nazarites who vow to bring these offerings to the Lord. They may also bring additional offerings if they can afford it. And they must be careful to do whatever they vowed when they set themselves Protestant Nazarites. Now, these next few verses are very, very important. Um, I'll give you a story once I read them. Verse uh, 21. This is the ritual law of the Nazarites who vow to bring these offerings to the Lord. They may also bring additional offerings if they can afford it, and they must be careful to do whatever they vowed when they set themselves apart as Nazarites. Then verse 22. This is called the priestly blessing. The priestly blessing. Verse 22, then the Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron and his sons to bless the people of Israel with this special blessing. Here's what it is. Verse 24, may the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you peace. I went to high school with um, three kids I knew were Catholic. I grew up in Southeast Tennessee, a lot of Baptists. Church of Christ, Church of God, Assembly of God. Uh, we had three kids in my entire high school that we knew were Catholic. And so every year they'd sign an annual, you know, get an annual, and then you'd, kids would sign. And the Catholics would sign this. In the end, they say, May the Lord bless you, protect you. May the Lord smile on you, be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you peace. I thought it was a Catholic saying. I thought something Catholic said. But then I got in Bible school later on, you know, when I got my degree, and I realized, no, it was a God saying. God said this. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you peace. Verse 27, whenever Aaron and his sons bless the people of Israel in my name, I will bless them. But he said, I myself will bless them. When are you going to bless me, God? Whenever you say it. When are you going to bless my family? Whenever you say it. When are you going to bless my kids? Whenever you say it, when are you going to bless my business? Whenever you say it, when are you going to bless my nation? Whenever you say it, life and death are in the power of the tongue. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say I'm rich. Call those things to be not as though they are. We have the power of God in our mouth. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You got to say what God says, not what you're feeling, not what you're thinking, not what your emotions are saying. No, be still and know that I'm God. We got to say what God says. Well, if you don't know what God said, you can't say it. That's why you need to meditate in the word day and night, Joshua 1 8. If you'll meditate in the word day and night, then you'll prosper and have good success. How do I prosper and have good success? I need to say what God says about my life. For example, with long life, will I satisfy them? and show them my salvation. i got a big family. They tell me, man, I don't think I'm going to live long. Man, I'm probably going to die early. I'm probably going to catch that. I bet I've got that. I'm probably going to get that. Oh, there's a new decision. I'm probably going to get that. No, 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 no. We're the redeemed of the Lord. I say with long life, God's going to satisfy me and show me a salvation. What is that? I'm the redeemed of the Lord, and I say what God says about me. God promised me long life. God promised me 70 years of my strength, 80 and 90. 
And possibly if you want to get your faith out there, you can go for 120. And so I'm going to live long. I don't want to live a short life. I'm going to live a very long, prosperous life. I want to lay up treasure in heaven while I'm down here. I want to be good to people. I'm going to give water to the thirsty and food to the hungry, visit people in prison, help orphans, help widows, restore sick people back to health. I am the redeemed of the Lord. Not only do I say so, I need to act like it. (laughs) Jesus said, you want to be great in my kingdom? Yes. How do I be great in your kingdom, Jesus? You need to you need to say these things and do what I'm telling you to do. And so, so Jesus said, listen, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You know, they tried to trick Jesus. They came to him one time, the Sadducees and Pharisees, they're trying to trick him. And they said, well, what's the greatest law? Now they believed every letter of the law. I mean, it was incredible. 17 books of the law. So Jesus knew they were trying to trick him. He said, well, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength. And then there's a second law, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Jesus said, if you'll do these two commandments, you will fulfill all 17 books of the law. You don't even need to read them or memorize them. If you'll just do these two things, if you fear God, serve your fellow man, you will fulfill the law. God's like, what's he trying to do? I'm getting you to live right and talk right and do right and share right and be right. So we can do it. God's never asked us to do anything we cannot already do. Now, the Bible says the righteous fall seven times a day, but they get back up. We're not the perfect people. We're just the getting back up people. Every day as a Christian, I tell my kids, I get to repent. I get to forgive. Tomorrow, I get to repent. I get to forgive. The next day, I get to repent. I get to forgive. We're growing in the things of God. We're not perfect. We're headed toward perfection but we're not there yet. The Bible again says the righteous fall seven times a day, but they get back up. We got a great life. God's ordering our steps, directing our paths, guiding us in the truth, surrounding us with divine favor. We do have opposition every day. Jesus never said one time, but he had opposition every day. The apostle Paul wrote two thirds New Testament, prayed in the Holy Ghost more than anybody, but he had opposition every day. We're supposed to resist the opposition, not curse it or cuss it or gripe or complain. But resisted. Why? Walking in love. Love never fails. This is a great, great lesson. This is a great chapter. You got to meditate. Just get time. Just, just open up and read Numbers chapter six again. It'll bless your socks off what God's trying to do with us. Thanks for listening. Join us next time when we're talking through the Bible. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God could do in your life. It's got a great future for you and your family. We're here to help you get there. Please make sure you visit Joe McGee Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. There you find all of our Friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family. While you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.